It's that time. It's game time, baby. That time. <laughs> time to kick off Sports Extra. Brought to you by Southside Lumber and Pizza Hut. Now, News 3 Sports Extra. Sports Extra. Sports Extra. Hey there, it's that time. Friday Sports Extra is here. On the way, can Mount Vernon hang with those speed demons from Cahokia and Fairfield tries to hand Carterville its first loss of the season. But first, a Mississippi showdown between two of the best in Southern Illinois. Well, the numbers are just staggering when you talk about DeCoin and Anna Jonesboro. The Wildcats are headed to the playoffs for the eighth straight year. They've won 18 of their last 19 games. Well, the postseason is old hat for the Indians. They're on the verge of clinching their 24th straight playoff appearance. Tonight, the two met in DeCoin with the Mississippi title on the line to Van Meter Field we go. Well, extra cheerleaders on hand for this one. First quarter, Lucas Hyam in the quarterback sneak. 7-0 A.J. Second quarter, it's A.J. Hill, the DeCoin quarterback, returning the favor on the sneak, 7-7. And it stayed that way for a long, long time. A scoreless third and a scoreless fourth led to overtime. Heilman runs in another TD. It was 14-7. A.J. Hill runs in another TD for DeCoin. So it's all up to this extra point. But the kick was no good, and the Wildcats hang on, and they clinch a share of the Mississippi 14-13, the final. Right before that overtime, wasn't so great, but now I've never seen the guys happier. I would have never uh, thought that it turned out this way. I, I, I give it all to my teammates for trying their butts off. I knew it was going to be a great rivalry. Uh, I'm, I'm just glad with the way it turned out. Two outstanding football teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe tonight, also in the Mississippi. Paintyville wins at Chester 22-15, and it was Nashville over Sparta 21-0. Well, when you think about the Cahokia Comanches, the first thing that comes to mind is speed, and that speed oftentimes turns into points. In four games they have played this year, the Comanches are averaging 51 points a contest. Tonight, the Mount Vernon Rams get their shot to try and slow down the Comanches. A win by the Rams, or they are in the driver's seat in the South 7. First quarter, Darian Donald hooking up with Jimmy Hunt, and it is 6-0 Cahokia just like that. The Rams come back, and they answer with Joel Rush. Big night for Rush. This a 57-yard touchdown in this game. He becomes Mount Vernon's all-time leading rusher, Joel Rush. There he is, number one. Congratulations to him. And suing kickoff. Cahokia can strike this quick. That is Hunt again. He bobbles it, but he gets it back, and there's the speed. Another touchdown, 77 yards, and it is 14-7 Comanches. But the Rams defense stepping up. Donald in trouble. He just throws it up, and Chicken Stucky is there to grab it. A nice return, and that leads to a one-yard quarterback sneak by Jacob Alvis. Mount Vernon within 14-13. The Rams will get an 18-yard field goal from Mike Swinnon with 13 seconds to go to win it 23-22. A win next week against Centralia, and the Rams are South 7 champions. Also in the South 7 tonight, Marion beats winless Centralia 61-7, and it was Altoff running over Carbondale 48-14. There were major conference title implications in Carterville as well, where the Lions had a chance to lock up the Black Diamond title if they could take care of second place Fairfield. The Mules started the night tied with Carmichael White County, a game and a half behind Carterville, and it was homecoming night in the jungle, and the Lions would go to work early. Tony Brown, the homecoming king, you would expect him to have a big night here. The nine-yard run set up his own one-yard plunge, 6-0 Carterville, capping a seven-minute drive to open the game. First Fairfield possession, David Kashaba picks off Lucas Reaver, and that would set up Brad Drust from five yards out, and it was 14-0 Carterville after one. Second quarter, more Lions, more from Brown. He is going to go virtually untouched into the end zone. That looked awfully easy. 20-0 Lions at that point. Now Carterville going for the juggler. Brown going up top late in the second. But Reaver is there with the interception. The Mules stay alive. They would march down the field, got inside Carterville's 10. Final play of the first half. Reaver rolling, rolling, and Michael Allen breaks up the pass at the goal line. Carterville led 20-0 at the break, and they go in to win it. 26-0. We'll have more from the Diamond in a bit. But first to West Frankfurt, the Redbirds on a five-game winning streak taking on Massac County. Byron Bailey on the punt return. He makes some moves, picks up some blocks. 
all the way down the sideline. He goes for the touchdown. It is 26-0 Patriots. Zach Kester, Massac's quarterback, drops back, and he hits a streaking David Rodgers. No one in between him and Pater. 33 to nothing, Massac. The Patriots rolling. Ensuing kickoff, it's Ricky Stubblefield. Drops it, recovers, and he is off to the races, but one of the few bright spots tonight for the Redbirds. Kester is going to add on for Massac as they cruise in this one. He races his way to the corner of the end zone. Big win for the Patriots, 48 to 6 over the West Frankfurt Redbirds. How about 0-6 Benton against 6-0 Heron? And this one going about as you think it would. The Rangers making some noise, but not loud enough tonight. Kyle Derry moves out of the pocket, throws on the run to Nick Thompson for the TD, 13-0. Heron, Tim Corn and the Rangers on the move until Thompson makes another play with the INT. Heron in business, then the handoff. After we see some folks cheering the handoff to Aaron Anders, and he gets a big yardage. That leads to another Tiger touchdown. More Heron and more Kyle Derry, the quarterback, rolling to his right, and he finds the touchdown machine, Tommy Taylor. He makes his way in. All Heron tonight. They are 7-0, 54-6 over Benton. Also in the Ohio tonight, it was Harrisburg, 48, Murfreesboro, 16. As promised, back to the Diamond, Carmel White County, the number nine team in our coaches poll, hitting the road to take on CZR. It looked like a bad start for Car Carmel. A team meeting for the Bearcats tackling Alex Heltzel, but Carmel comes right back. Shane Sisko coming up with the catch, and he'll take it into the end zone. 14-0 Bulldogs with the extra point. Then on the run, it's Ethan Healy. He is going to pick up 53 yards. He'll finally get pushed out inside the 20, and that would set up this. Eric Rice, touchdown. Carmi led 33-0 at the half, and the Bulldogs win it. Touchdown, Your final, 39-13. Our final prep visual stop, Elkville. The Elverado Trico Falcons taking on Cesar Waltonville Woodlawn. And it was the Red Devils striking first on the punt return. Brock Wheatley weaving his way into the end zone. 6-0 SV, double W. Back come the Falcons. Casey Bowman to Coy Cobbin. Great grab there from Cobb, and he stopped at the one. Elvarado punched it in, tying the game at six. But then Kendall Gibson up top. A nice throw and catch to Todd Carpenter, and it was 12-6. Then it's Wheatley, and he is going to plow his way through the dusty fields. Looks like Pigpen getting in the end zone there. It was 18-6, and then it's Wheatley again. This time, or excuse me, it's Gibson again, up top to Carpenter again. Looks like a replay of the first time. All Red Devils tonight, they win it. 38 to 12. Also in the diamond, Hamilton County wins at Johnson City 24 to 6. Also tonight, Breeze Modern Day blanks El Dorado. Your final there, 50 to nothing. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching. We're back tomorrow night for Saturday Sports Extra. Good night.